We are so back. And don't you dare think that just because we missed the funniest news story of last week that we weren't going to talk about it. Because while we were off touring our nation's capital and listening to politicians struggle to understand why young people don't like or trust them, third party candidate for president Robert F. Kennedy Jr. admitted that he was diagnosed with brain worms. That's real. And that the worm used the inside of his skull as an all-you-can-eat buffet. And that uh, actually no one should worry because his brain worms won't have an effect on his ability to govern if he were to be elected president of the United States. Have no fear, everyone. My brain worms have not affected my ability to govern. Okay. <laughs> Luckily for him and all, of the, and all of us, RFK Jr. will never be president. But it's still very funny that this is a story that he had to get out in front of before it was exposed by one of his political opponents. Christy Nome has killing her dog, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has his brain worms, and it's only going to get crazier from here. And yes, we are going to talk about the latest Orca attack, but first, just sit tight and let us get this out of the way first. We are so back. Mm -hmm. The brain worms are definitely the most ridiculous medical issue that RFK has been dealing with. Not his only issue, mm -mm. but the most ridiculous one, and clearly it's the one getting all the attention. But alongside his brain worm diagnosis, there were a few other issues that seemed to be as important as a parasite making itself at home in his noggin, at least when it comes to ruling the United States of America, <laughs> which again, he never will, but it's still a factor. The brain worms would certainly explain a lot, though. Yeah. These revelations came from an interview between the candidate and the New York Times, who also reviewed a deposition from way, way back, where he went into detail about his health over the years, including the diagnosis behind his hoarse and gravelly voice, and the fact that he apparently gave himself mercury poisoning because he was eating what must have been an ungodly amount of fish. Yeah. The man's part orca. Well, I mean, say what you want, but he apparently has eaten enough fish that he can now communicate with them. Or at the very least, the orcas are like, damn, we thought we were devouring the ocean. The only other person I've heard of this happening to was Jeremy Piven, like 15 years ago. And it was widely assumed that he was simply uh, making an excuse for why, for like backing out of a Broadway play where none of his co-stars liked him. Well. But he's like, yeah, you know, I eat a lot of sushi. You, you move next to a really good sushi place, and the next thing you know, you got mercury poisoning. Yeah. It happens. That's, that's the Kennedy... The Kennedy body. Kennedys and brain stuff do not mix. JFK, famously, just the most fucked up body anyone his age has ever had. Mm -hmm. And then they, speaking of, well, he, he obviously got brained, but uh, speaking of that, they, they gave, it was, was his sister got the... Uh, she got the, the ice pick. Yeah, the ice pick in the skull. In the frontal lobe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of, lot of stuff happening to those Kennedys' bodies. Yeah. But here's more from the New York Times' recent article. In 2010, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. was experiencing memory loss and mental fogginess so severe that a friend grew concerned that he might have a brain tumor. Several doctors noticed a dark spot on the younger Mr. Kennedy's brain scans and concluded that he had a tumor, he said in a 2012 deposition reviewed by the New York Times. Mr. Kennedy was immediately scheduled for a procedure at Duke University Medical Center by the same surgeon who had operated on his uncle, he said. While packing for the trip, he received a call from a doctor at New York Presbyterian Hospital who had a different opinion. Mr. Kennedy, he believed, had a dead parasite in his head. The doctor believed that the abnormality seen on his scans was caused by a worm that got into my brain and ate a portion of it and then died, Mr. Kennedy said in the deposition. Yeah, brain, I mean, brain worms. I didn't think that was a real thing. That's just something I, I describe, uh, you know, boomers with bad beliefs, but yes. I guess it is a real condition. And I, I think everyone over 50 in this country has to go get screened when you go as for your, soon as possible. When you go for your colon cancer screening, uh, you, you're, the top part of your body's not really doing anything. They might as well give it a quick scan. Hey, Doc, I'm already in here. Why don't you check out my brain? Yeah, just go in through the bottom all the yeah. way to the top. Yeah, it's very non-invasive. Uh -huh. Anyway, they go on to talk about how RFK Jr. has positioned himself as a very health-forward, athletically inclined candidate who goes out of his way to prove that he is in incredible shape. Mm -hmm. We've all seen the videos of him working out topless, and um, if you haven't, congrats. Um, I mean, look, he is in great shape for his age, but those push-ups sure. push were fucking whack. Yeah. I, when people, like, they're like, oh, I can do so many push-ups, and they get on the ground, they're just like... Lifting themselves like an inch and a half off the ground. Down, like, okay, that, like, that's doing something, but you can't claim that you're doing uh, that many push-ups. Full extension, come on, let's yeah. see it. 
But despite his obsession with seeming young and virile, he got a lot of issues. Like we said, it runs in the family. And we should be clear, it's obviously, it's kind of silly talking about RFK's health considering the other two options. But he's the one who shoved his way onto the national stage during this election cycle. And he's also the one, if he rides this thing out, who could become a spoiler candidate for one of the other two nominees. Not sure which one. Yeah, my, it, it's looking more and more like he would be the spoiler for Trump. And Trump is uh, getting very upset about that yeah. now. Now that the poll numbers are coming back no! in. And he's going, uh, wait a second, I thought this guy was supposed to hurt Biden's chances. Also, he uses his boomer athleticism to push a bunch of pseudoscientific bullshit that can actually harm otherwise healthy people. So yeah, fuck him. Yeah. Here's more from the article. For decades, Mr. Kennedy suffered from atrial fibrillation, a common heartbeat abnormality that increases the risk of stroke or heart failure. About the same time he learned of the parasite, he said, he was also diagnosed with mercury poisoning, most likely from ingesting too much fish containing the dangerous heavy metal, which can cause serious neurological issues. Quote, I have cognitive problems, clearly, he said in the 2012 deposition. I have short-term memory loss, and I have longer-term memory loss that affects me. Sounds like he has all the memory loss. Yeah. And I do love that he goes, you can put that on a bumper sticker. I have cognitive problems. Cognitive problems. Clearly. Clearly. In the interview with the Times, he said he had recovered from the memory loss and fogginess and had no after effects from the parasite, which he said had not required treatment. So it's just still in there? Yeah. The campaign declined to provide his medical records to the Times. Now they're saying, uh, they go into it in the article, but they're saying that like it died and then his brain kind of like grew around it. So it's just in there now. Amazing. And it looks like a tumor, but it's not. It's a, it's a worm. It's just a dead worm. Uh, if they pull it, it out, it's like pulling that crayon out of Homer's nose. Yeah. He'd be too smart, too powerful. They got to leave it in. I do love that, like, you know, the one argument you could make for RFK, forgetting everything else, is like, hey, at least he's younger than these other two guys who are clearly both uh, sundowning and, and showing signs of cognitive decline. And then he's like, actually, despite being like 15 y years younger than these other guys, I too have experienced terrible cognitive decline. I got short-term memory loss, long-term memory loss, I have the brain of an 85-year-old. Brain year worms, old. mercury poisoning. He's like uh, a fucking uh, Jair Bolsonaro. He is. Put me back in the fucking hospital. America needs its own Bolsonaro. Uh, regarding the brain worms more specifically, doctors ultimately concluded that the cyst they saw on scans contained the remains of a parasite. Mr. Kennedy said that he did not know the type of parasite or where he might have contracted it, though he suspected it might have been during a trip through South Asia. Okay. Was he sticking his nose in poop? Just snorting river water. Yeah. Get in there! I want those superpowers everyone's always talking about. Or, or maybe... Uh... <laughs> Maybe he just went on an international trip without getting all the proper vaccines that you're supposed to fucking get. Well, because he's would, an anti vaxxer That would certainly make <laughs> a lot of sense, wouldn't it, Elliot? <laughs> when you travel internationally and they're like, hey, they have bugs that carry diseases that we don't have here, so you might want to get vaccinated beforehand. No, I don't yeah. think I will. Not for me, thanks. <laughs> they also add that it was very unlikely that the worm actually ate his brain. Which is weird because he's the one that admitted that. Yeah. He's like, yeah, it got in there and started eating my brain. Just munching around. And everyone's like, the experts are like, no, <laughs> sir. You ever you ever take a bite of an apple and there's just all sorts of tunnels in there? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's my... pretty much my brain. I love someone did art last week of the fucking worm from Richard's. I guess Richard Scary, the worm oh, yeah, Richard yeah. Scary, uh, driving him around. <laughs> the window was his forehead. Yeah, fantastic work, everyone. Uh, but yeah, I guess they, I guess it didn't eat his brain. Mm -hmm. Okay, New York Times. It was probably just surviving off of nutrients that were around it. In the and that's that that's eating. Sure. I think that's eating. Yeah. So when it dies, it can cause in issues like inflammation, and it will definitely appear as though you have a tumor, but it, it's unlikely to cause further issues. <laughs> they did point out, however, that many of his cognitive issues could have come from the mercury poisoning. Mr. Kennedy said he was then subsisting on a diet heavy on predatory fish, notably tuna and perch, both known to have elevated mercury levels. In the interview with the Times, he said that he had experienced severe brain fog and had trouble retrieving words. He went in for a blood test and said the test showed his mercury levels were 10 times what the Environmental Protection Agency considers safe. Mm. In the interview, Mr. Kennedy said he was certain his diet had caused the poisoning. I love tuna fish sandwiches. I ate them all the time, he said. Oh, he's not even, it's not even sushi. He's just eating fucking tuna That's fish sandwiches. That's a lot of tuna fish yeah, sandwiches. I think you might have too much tuna, sir. That's a little hey. bit too much tuna. 
It is. And I, I don't understand how his toes survived this. Because it sounds like he would have had the case of the king's disease. Yeah. Yeah. I got gout. Ugh. Cheryl, rub my feet. Uh, he also spoke about his heart issues, as well as contracting hepatitis C from intravenous drug use sure. in his youth. And, of course, the spasmodic dysphonia that causes his voice to sound strained. Uh, so going back to that, like it is, it does seem like the brain worms thing was a very funny package to throw all this other stuff in yeah. that would get called out on the campaign trail. Like, oh, you did, uh, you know, injectionable drugs. Just get it all out there. Yeah. Also, like, within the... Uh, testimony that they were talking about. I guess it was like during a divorce from his other wife and it was... Was it the one that killed herself afterwards? No, I think this was the second wife. A different wife. Uh, who was like it, he ruined his ability to make money by getting a neurological disease that hurt his voice. So, uh, I don't know how this guy's going to keep making money. You've got to go. Damn. I uh, rest my case. His campaign, on the other hand, they heavily leaned into that brainworms thing because they know that it's going to get a bunch of attention. And he said in an official tweet, I offer to eat five more brain worms and still beat President Trump and President Biden in a debate. So, yeah, I mean, cool. Good to know that our current options for president of the United States are A, an elderly man who is ruining his chances at being elected by helping to perpetuate a genocide. B, an elderly man who is a criminal fascist and only wants to regain power so that he can avoid jail time and sell out the country to line his own pockets. And now C, an elderly man who has literal fucking brain worms and thinks that vaccines cause autism. So, what a country! USA. I'm waving that flag. Mm -hmm. Saw a lot of that flag this week, and I, <laughs> so many people, so many people are like, oh God, you go to DC and you just feel so patriotic. You feel connected to your country. And uh, I, I'm happy, was, to re happy to report I didn't feel fucking shit. It's like this place exists in a bubble that, yeah. of reality that doesn't exist anywhere else in the country. Yeah, I, it's a lovely. The economy's doing great. Why is no one talking about it? It's a lovely town, but also objectively, probably the most evil place on the face <laughs> of the earth. There are just Hitler particles emanating <laughs> out of every surface. Mm -hmm. But back to the news. Let's briefly set aside the politics and talk about something we can all agree on. Yeah. Orcas wrecking shit. That's cool. We love it. We like when orcas. Destroy things. They, they're like, hey, wait, I'm huge. I don't have to put up with this shit. Yeah. I'm going to sink your literal 50-foot yacht. Yeah, and folks, it happened again. There was a bit of a winter lull, but they're back. Maybe it has something to do with the changing the seasons. Feels like it's been a little while since we've heard from our good friends, the orcas. But they are back, and they're better than ever, having successfully sunk a yacht in the Strait of Gibraltar off the coast of Spain. Wait, I know that song because it happened all last summer. It was the song of last summer, and it's back. Do I, do I hear music? Ooh, yep, yeah. that's, that's the beautiful whale song. <laughs> yeah, the, the orcas sound, and yeah. they are coming. Now that uh, it's summertime, they are ready to fuck shit up once Yeah, again. water's warm. <laughs> it's Get time in. to party. <laughs> so last summer, of course, we, we could not go a week or two without seeing a new story about uh, orcas attacking boats, causing general chaos, or mysteriously showing up where they're not supposed to be, all in what appears to have been a general threat to human the, just the, the species of humankind, the ones yeah. that have been fucking this shit they, up. They, they, they were like, hey, just so you know, yeah. you got to stop fucking around they're, or we're going to get real in a they're second. They're sending a very clear message. Uh -huh. Stop fucking with the environment. We can literally feel the oceans heating up. We live in them. Mm -hmm. We speak orca. They told us that's what they've been saying. That's why they've become so fierce. Yeah. So um, there you go. Still, though, the orca attacks seemed to calm down in recent months, but that's probably because they decided to regroup and strategize. And now, as we move into the summer months again, the attacks have resumed. And this week, they are back in the news for what might be their most intense interaction yet. Here is The Guardian with more. An unknown number of orcas have sunk a yacht after ramming it in Moroccan waters in the Strait of Gibraltar, Spain's Maritime Rescue Service has said, in the latest in a series of similar incidents involving the animals. The vessel, Alberon Cognac, which measured 15 meters or 49 feet in length and carried two people, encountered the highly social apex predators, also known as killer whales, at 9 a.m. local time on Sunday. The passengers reported feeling sudden blows to the hull and rudder before the boat started taking on water. After alerting the rescue services, a nearby oil tanker took them on board and transported them to Gibraltar. The yacht was left adrift and eventually sank. The incident is the latest example of recurring orca rammings around the Gibraltar Strait that separates Europe from Africa and off the Atlantic coast of Portugal and northwestern Spain. Experts believe them to involve a subpopulation of about 15 individuals given the designation Gladys. 
According to the research group GT Atlantic Orca, which tracks populations of the Iberian Orca subspecies, there have been nearly 700 interactions since orca attacks on ships in the region were first reported in May 2020. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, Gladys. Gladys decided to rally the troops and yeah. said, look, half a year, we're going to go, I don't know, we'll go to California. It's nice over there. Yeah. And then don't worry, though. It's almost Memorial Day in the States. Time to go back. To, they know our holidays and no one else's. Yeah, they Time do. to go back to the Strait of Gibraltar and show them what we've learned by torturing seals all winter. Yeah. They've probably been breeding. There's, maybe there's more of them now. There could be. I mean, very cool. they're back in greater numbers. Very legal and very cool because you are. You can't hurt you them. You cannot fight back. Yeah. The law is on their side. They attack with impunity. I, you know, a lot of weird things happen. A lot of bizarre statements are made that I would never assume could exist. And I feel like we're on the cusp of Joe Biden claiming that orcas are Hamas. Yeah. Who knows? Orcas definitely ate his uncle, though. That's right. We can all agree on that. Yeah. But moving on to another recent viral sensation, the portal. Hey! A portal between Dublin, Ireland and New York City was unveiled last week, and oh, it's already been temporarily shut down while they address um, some serious issues with how it was being used. Now, to clarify, you didn't miss some massive technological breakthrough that would allow humans to instantaneously travel to other parts of the planet. The portal is simply two giant circular screens with a webcam attached. One portal on a street in Dublin, and one in New York City. And can you guess why it's already been temporarily shut off? You Imagine. are, you know, it's a fucking screen with a camera on it. People it, are going to do dumb shit. It's a camera you can stand in front of and do anything and it, not face any consequences for because the only people that can see you, other than people directly around you, are on the other side of an ocean. <laughs> so yeah, simple human nature dictates that live video feeds will instantly inspire people to test the limits of decency in arguably the funniest or most disturbing ways possible, and it did not take long at all before the portal nearly caused World War III. So first, let's see what this installation was supposed to achieve. It's always like a really nice goal, right? Gosh, it's just so special. Back in the day, you had to travel by, by sea over a month to get from Dublin to the United States yeah. looking for a new life, and now we can... Look at this. If this portal this existed now. back in the early 1910s, the Titanic tragedy would have never happened. If this portal existed in the 1860s, the Ku Klux Klan would have shut it down. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so this is how it was <laughs> supposed to work. The newly installed public technology sculptures, collectively named The Portal, form an unprecedented visual bridge between these two iconic cities, according to a statement from the Flatiron Nomad Partnership, which presented the installation in collaboration with the Simons Foundation and New York City Department of Transportation Art Program. The sculptures are the latest in a series by artist Benedictus Gillies. Portals are an invitation to meet people above borders and differences and to experience our world as it really is, united and one, said Gillies in the statement. The live stream provides a window between distant locations, allowing people to meet outside of their social circles and cultures, transcend geographical boundaries, and embrace the beauty of global interconnectedness. No, you just made, you made chat roulette. Yeah, that's per, what you did. You made a chat roulette permanent installation. Uh, so obviously... That didn't happen. No. Instead, almost immediately after it was unveiled, you had people in New York calling Irish people wankers, people showing their asses to each other, using the portal as a glory hole, and in the most devastating blow, people on the Dublin side were holding up photos of the 9-11 terrorist attacks and broadcasting that to everyone gathered around the New York side of the portal. So, just incredible stuff. Was this in Times Square? It was in the Flatiron District, so just slightly outside of okay. Times Square. But, uh, yeah, it's still a very populated area. Yeah. Oh, the flat, where that big, uh, that... The, where that, the Flatiron... That narrow-ass building is. Yes. Here's the latest on the war portal from BBC. Changes will be made to the way a visual art installation linking Dublin to New York is operating due to some individuals engaging in inappropriate behavior, Dublin City Council has said. The portals opened last week in both cities with many people enjoying the ability to interact with passersby on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. However, on Monday, Irish and U.S. media reported inappropriate behavior over the weekend at the Dublin portal. 
Videos circulating online included clips of a man mooning and others apparently pretending to take drugs. A caller to RTE Radio told of a woman suspected of being under the influence of alcohol being led away by Irish police after dancing provocatively against the portal screen. In a statement on Monday, the council said the overwhelming majority of interactions are positive, but said a very small minority of people have been engaged in the inappropriate behavior and that this has been amplified through social media. While we cannot control all these actions, we are implementing some technical solutions to address this, and these will go live in the next 24 hours, it added. We will continue to monitor the situation over the coming days with our partners in New York to ensure that portals continue to deliver a positive experience for both cities and the world. I don't know what these technical uh, updates are going to be, but I can't imagine them going seamlessly. I, it's still going to be people whipping their dicks out, mooning it, trying to have sex with it, running into it, and, uh, you know, they kind of got us. Like, yeah. there's not much you could show to the Irish side that would piss them off. Like, with, I guess some images from the Troubles, but, like... You could wave a British flag. They wouldn't like that. Yeah, I guess so. But I, some of them there would be like, oh, okay, whatever. But the 9-11, everyone is just like, hey, fuck you. Yeah. Only we can make fun of that. It was really funny putting this in America. People just seem to forget that um, we're really not the most popular country in the world. No. Especially just like, you know, on a personal basis, you, you, know, you, meet, you meet someone from America or you meet someone from another country. Like, hey, yeah, well, pretty fun. cool. Yeah. But as a group, we're not very well liked. No. And you are giving people on the other side of the world, or on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, the opportunity to say or do anything in our presence, and we can't fight back. Yeah. What did you think was going to happen? You know, and last time the Irish infiltrated New York, it didn't go so well either. No, they had those gangs. <laughs> the gangs of <laughs> New York. Uh, so the council has not specified what technical changes will actually be made, but, uh, you know, I'm not holding my breath for anything substantial. It's, what are they going to do, black it out when someone shows... Images of 9-11 again? They'll have a, one of America's trained elementary school teachers with a folder. Anytime something on screen, <laughs> they cover it up with they the folder. They cover everyone's eyes? Yeah. <laughs> no! <laughs> now, I was in New York this past weekend, and I kind of wanted to see it in person, but I knew that I would feel that call of the void. And I, I would just end up like Naruto running directly into this thing at full speed, attempting to warp myself into Ireland. Oh, if only. I knew it wouldn't work, but uh, my adult brain did kick in, and I realized I would probably just end up knocking the portal over and inadvertently killing a small child. So I went for a slice of pizza instead. Yeah, that's, that's better use of your time, I think. Yeah. All right, we do have more news coming up for you in just a second, including Donald Trump doing something stupid and Hillary Clinton doing something stupid. What year is it? Stay tuned to find out what year it is in a second. But first, <laughs> let's thank today's sponsor. What year do you think it is? <laughs> today's sponsor. The orcas are attacking. Yeah. Hillary's on camera. Trump's saying dumb shit. The Irish are at it again. Yeah, yeah, who's to say? It could be any year. But let's thank today's sponsor in the meantime, and that is Henson Shaving. Believe it or not, I actually remembered to shave this morning, so that makes me an expert. This is yeah. maybe the first time we've had a Henson ad read where I actually... Shaved the morning that it happened. Good. Uh, and uh, H Henson is the best shave that you can find, especially when you consider price and sustainability. That's right. Henson Shaving is a family-owned aerospace parts manufacturer that has made parts for the International Space Station and Mars Rover. And now they're bringing precision engineering to your shaving experience. Razor blades are like diving boards. The longer the board, the more wobble, and the more wobble, the more nicks, cuts, and scrapes. A bad shave isn't a blade problem, it's an extension problem. By using aerospace-grade CNC machines, Henson makes metal razors that extend just 0.0013 inches, which is less than the thickness of a human hair. That means a secure and stable blade with a vibration-free shave. But wait, it gets better. The razor has built-in channels to evacuate hair and cream, which makes clogging virtually impossible. Seriously, Henson Shaving wants the best razor, not the best razor business. That means no plastic, no subscriptions, no proprietary blades, and no planned obsolescence. The Henson Razor works with standard dual-edge blades to give you that old-school shave with the benefits of new-school tech. Once you own a Henson Razor, it's only about $3 to $5 per year to replace the blades. Honestly, we do love this razor, mainly because it is, of course, infinitely reusable, it gets the job done extremely well, and you are not contributing to more plastic pollution in the process. Also, the handle has a good weight to it. It just feels like a good, strong razor. It's ridiculously cheap to refill over time, and of course, 
It's always fun to reject modernity and embrace tradition. It's time to say no to subscriptions, and yes, to a razor that'll last your lifetime. Visit hensonshaving.com slash itdaily to pick the razor for you and use code itdaily. You'll get two years worth of blades free with your razor. Just make sure to add them to your cart. That's 100 free blades when you head to h-e-n-s-o-n-s-h-a-v-i-n-g dot com slash itdaily and use code itdaily. Check them out if you are looking for a good shave. Supporting our sponsors means supporting this show. All right, back to the news now, and uh, old Donnie Trump, he's still on trial over there in New York City. He he was making a break for that portal, and that's why they had to shut it down. No, he's getting away! Yeah, no extradition. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, do they have extradition? Well, if you get caught in the portal, if the, you're in a tug of war between two realms, it's a very scary position. If you position. get caught in the portal, it's like that Stephen King story where the kid uh, chooses not to go to sleep during mm. the teleportation and ends up, uh, spoiler alert, spending like... 10,000 years uh, in the void just being tortured. Was that Langoliers or no? No, that That's was... That's the plain uh, one, right? Fuck, I don't remember the title of it. It's a good story. I'm sorry I spoiled it. Well, Trump would run and jump into this thing and then he'd get stuck halfway through. Longer was, than you think, Baron. Longer <laughs> than you think. His little feetsies would be wagging on one <laughs> side, his hands going on the other. Oh! Yeah. Oh! My very wide waistline has <laughs> foiled me again. So yes, uh, his trial is moving right along, and recent testimony included statements from Stormy Daniels and also Trump's former fixer, Michael Cohen. Most of the stuff that's being shared, it's already known. Though in the case of Stormy Daniels, there appears to have been a few things that were said that probably shouldn't have been. She spoke about a bunch of weird sex shit with Trump, which really doesn't have much to do with the actual case yeah. itself, and even the judge admitted it shouldn't have been said in court. But as Mershon pointed out at the time, it is up to Trump's legal team to object to testimony while it is happening, and they did not. Instead, they waited until afterwards and then asked for a mistrial, which the judge did not grant for the reasons that we just explained. Yeah, no, you, you had your chance. <laughs> Basically, yeah, they tried to file for a mistrial because they failed to object to testimony that wasn't pertinent to the case. And he was like, it is your job to fucking object. So no, you can't just... Sit there and wait for something to happen. That's a hell of a legal strategy. Though. They're trying everything. Every, they're, they're setting new precedents all the time. You don't understand, Your Honor. I'm so bad at my job that my client didn't get a fair trial. Yeah, we, we have to do this over. <laughs> so cut to Monday of this week. We got Michael Cohen, a real pit bull. Yeah, the pit bull on the stand. Yeah, women love it. Michael mm -hmm. Cohen on the stand. And he reiterated the fact that Donald Trump was indeed involved in all aspects of the hush money deal. That it was done because of the 2016 election and that Trump was the one who ordered the payout. Also, it appears as though Trump is attempting to sidestep the gag order placed on him by Judge Mershon, yet again, by having loyalists from the Republican Party, Ohio's J.D. Vance and Alabama's Tommy Tuberville, join him in court and then represent him publicly through press conferences and media appearances. Yep, he got two of his favorite sycophants out there to say I, exactly I didn't what say he, anything, that was hey, just them. It's these guys. I don't know where they heard that, wasn't me. They said some very nasty things, didn't they folks? But they're all mandatory. Very nasty, but who knows, I think I, I think I agree with them. A, a lot of people are saying it's true. <laughs> so Vance straight up attacked the judge's family. Tuberville questioned whether or not the jury members were true Americans and then got really sad about the fact that they call him Mr. Trump in court and not President Trump. First of all, I'm disappointed in the courtroom. I'm hearing Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump. He is former President Trump. Give him some respect. I mean, that's what that place is in there. It's no respect. Uh, yeah, he then licks Trump's shoes so clean that they sparkled yeah. and barked like a dog. On all fours. And then Christy Noem came and did the hard thing. She put him down. <laughs> Took him down to the gravel pit. <laughs> As for Trump himself, uh, we'll get to the bizarre Hannibal Lecter, <laughs> Hannibal this Lecter is quote. Good. I don't know how this man manages to top himself. Like, uh, you figure after eight years, it'd be like, okay, yeah, he's he's weird in like a hilarious way. <laughs> but like, hey, what more could he could he do yeah. or say? And we love him. We love him, don't <laughs> we, folks? What did he say? I'm having a friend for dinner. <laughs> He's a cannibal. So we'll, we'll get to that. But <laughs> one of the funniest lies that Trump uh, perpetuated recently was that he had a crowd of 100,000 people. or uh, Patriots. 100,000 patriots during his New Jersey rally uh, this weekend. And obviously that's not true. But how did he come up with that number? Well, over the weekend, Roger Stone shared an image of a just a, a massive crowd gathered for something. 
but he claimed that it was Trump's crowd at a rally in Wildwood, New Jersey, tweeting, yeah, New Jersey is in play for at real Donald Trump. Could Joe Biden draw a crowd like this? And then he attached the photograph, which is absolutely not New Jersey. And we don't understand how anyone would assume that it was New Jersey. The photo is actually from a Rod Stewart concert in Rio de Janeiro nearly 30 years ago. Nah, they got palm trees in, in uh, New Jersey. They, they have they massive like... green mountains that extend all the way to the shore. Yep. I mean, yes, just looking at the photo. Anyone who has been to New Jersey, seen New Jersey, heard about New Jersey, would know that that was not New Jersey. Anyways, at that massive rally in New Jersey, Trump went on a completely nonsensical rant that included a reference to the great and wonderful man. You know him. You love him. <laughs> Let's get him out here on stage. Amer Leave him out. America's sweetheart. Yes. I'm no, no, no. Take that mask off. <laughs> he just wants a little nibble. I'm, of course, talking about Everyone's favorite cannibal, Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> Hannibal the cannibal. That's what I call him, Hannibal the cannibal. They tried to lock him away, so he took that security guard, and he ripped his face off, and he wore that, that face as his own. And that's what Joe Biden's trying to do to me. And all of you, I'm just standing in their way. You know what he did? He silenced the lambs. But I'll never let that happen to you. The lambs, they're so loud, and Hannibal, he's like, no. No. Shh. We love him, uh. don't we, folks? Here you go. Silence of the Lamb. Has anyone ever seen the Silence of the Lamb? The late, great Hannibal Lecter is a wonderful man. He oftentimes would have a friend for dinner. Remember the last scene? Excuse me, I'm about to have a friend for dinner as this poor doctor walked by. I'm about to have a friend for dinner, but Hannibal Lecter, congratulations. The late, great Hannibal Lecter. Not to be outdone, though, Hillary Clinton once again shoved her way into Oh, the good! <laughs> into the national conversation to explicitly tell an entire generation of voters that they are stupid, ignorant, and that they have no idea what they're talking about, which is very rich coming from a woman who lost the easiest election in American history and can't even operate a subway turnstile. During an appearance on MSNBC's Morning Joe, Clinton was asked about the protests that have been happening on college campuses around the country, and her response was, Honestly, just dismissive and rude. Yeah, not really helpful yeah, great. in any way. Of course, great timing, too, especially yeah. when uh, Joe Biden's poll numbers are the worst they've ever been. Biden's in trouble. You know what he needs? You know who can give him the bump that he needs? Everyone's favorite former presidential candidate, Hillary Clinton. Hey, you're all stupid. <laughs> they really, they are in this crazy bubble. They don't know how much your average person at the very least, just doesn't want to hear from Hillary Clinton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, we're sinking. Time to wheel her out. Yeah. Everybody's favorite. She's going to tell them to Pokemon go to the polls. Uh, she didn't do that. In fact, she just called all of these literal fucking students morons. Yeah. They don't know uh, very much at all about the history of the Middle East or, frankly, about history um, in many areas uh, of the world, including in our own country. All right, Elliot. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. Thank you. Now, in addition to that, the Biden administration admitted on Friday of last week that, yeah, okay, Israel probably violated international humanitarian law, but we're not going to do anything about it. Um, certainly makes it fucking infuriating to vote in this year's election. Or not vote. <laughs> but speaking <laughs> of this year's election, it's almost pointless to talk about it at this point because she's absolutely not getting the gig. I don't know. But Christy Nome is back in the news after admitting to killing her 14-month-old dog and also maybe meeting with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Maybe. For some reason. Possibly, yeah. Uh, pretty much everyone was like, that never happened, and there's no record of her like being there. Like, you would know. Yeah. Th that, this would be huge news. Kim Jong-un does not meet with people. That's yeah, not a thing they, that happens. No matter how long ago it was, Someone would be like, oh, the governor of South Dakota is meeting with the leader of North Korea yeah, right it, now. It, there's like only maybe like two times in the last like 10 years where it could have possibly happened. And they were very high profile events. Yeah, There like, was photos and videos. One of them was Trump saluting yeah. the generals from North Korea. So we would have seen it or heard about it. But unfortunately for Christy Nome and fortunately for everyone else living in these areas, Christy Nome, the governor of South Dakota, has been banned from entering certain areas of her state by local tribes. Oh, hell yeah. Here's the BBC. 
Two Native American tribes in South Dakota have barred its governor, Kristi Noem, from their land as she doubles down on derogatory commentary against tribal leaders and reservation life. What? Yeah, and you know what? While, while I got your attention, fuck the Native Americans. Yeah. Fuck these tribes. Yeah. The latest bans add to existing exclusions from four other reservations this year. Ms. Nome is now banned from nearly one-fifth of state territory. <laughs> <laughs> it comes after the Republican cut short a disastrous national media book tour. Tribal governments have a sovereign right to exclude non-tribal members from their lands, with tribal law enforcement prepared to act if necessary. As governor, Ms. Nome, 52, has often been at odds with these authorities. While tribal and federal authorities have criminal jurisdiction over reservations, she has sought to expand state power. And they added, Last week, Mr. Trump acknowledged Ms. Nome has had a rough couple of days, <laughs> but said he liked her a lot and noted she has been supportive of me from the beginning. According to U.S. media, however, Trump insiders say she has killed her chances <laughs> of being his vice president. Just like she killed that dog. But hey... I, I heard a, a rumor, Nikki Haley, back on, uh, back on. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people are Team saying Trump. Nikki Haley. No, actually, she's not. Ha! He has to, he has to make I, her, uh, like, come beg for the job first I, before he tells her no. I 100% believe the theory that Trump put that out there just to dangle it in front of Nikki yeah. Haley so that he ha, could, ha, psych. So he can go on Truth Social and be like, nah, I would never do that. He also went, to the, he went to the Formula One race and just posted the entire time. On Truth Social, great stuff. It's loud, big, fast cars. What are you doing? Stop looking at your phone. Too loud. Anyways, finally, it's Game Stonk 2.0 time, baby. Because for some odd reason, Roaring Kitty, the guy who led the massive rally for the, the one with the bandana. Stuff, yeah, he came out, Dana? Yes, came out of hiding and posted on Twitter, which caused the stock to once again pointlessly skyrocket and then get halted from trading after jumping substantially. Here's NPR. Shares in video game retailer GameStop surged as much as 118% on Monday <laughs> after meme stock investor Roaring Kitty posted a cryptic image on X, his first post in about three years. Roaring Kitty is the online screen name of investor Keith Gill, who became instrumental in creating a trading frenzy behind GameStop and movie theater chain AMC, leading to massive rallies in those stocks in 2021. On Sunday, Gill reemerged to post a picture of a person who leans forward while gripping a game controller. The stock price shot up even before the market opened and got so volatile that trading was halted several times. Shares ended up 74%. For many investors, it was a reminder of the meme stock mania that gripped markets in 2021 when the pandemic left many people around the world confined at home. GameStop had already been having a bit of a comeback this month. Shares were up 57% this month as of the end of last week before shares rallied again on Monday. Here we go again, I guess. Well, sure. Okay. Speaking of what year is it, the, the one good thing about what year is it, we got Furiosa coming out this weekend. Oh, yeah. Pretty stoked on that. So yeah. that's, that is something to look forward to. And as a sign that it's going to be great, so everyone who worked on it sounds like they had a terrible fucking time. <laughs> yeah. Which that, that's the most isolating yeah. filming experience I've ever <laughs> that's had. That's the, the first one. Like, everyone who worked on it was like, yeah, like, I, there was like so many times that I was going to die. Like, yeah, was, who would have thought everyone being trapped was in, in a the bad desert. fucking move? We were working like 18 hour days. Like, it fucking sucked ass. It took a year. Yeah. And the, the talk from the crew and, and cast this time around is the exact same. So I'm like, we got to hit our hands. <laughs> <laughs> George Miller is torching people in the desert again. Yeah. Hell he, yeah. He doesn't give a shit because he's old as fuck. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyways, uh, that's it for today's video. We are back, meaning we will have plenty more videos coming up for you this week, including what I assume on Tech News Day will be talking about uh, the fact that ChatGPT has released literally the pocket computer from her and uh, many other things. But in the meantime... You, you've already seen them. It doesn't matter. We have videos popping up there, but what we really need is you to click the like button on yeah, this video. Get us back in the algorithm. We need to get back. We took too much time off. Not that it was time off because we were like doing things, but we need to get back in the algorithm. So if, if for some reason you're like, ah, I'll like the next video no, that we talk about. This no, this one. You like, like this one. Click the like button on this one. Leave a comment talking about how cool it is that we're back and reply yeah. to a comment. Just engage for Christ's sake. All right. We need it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. The videos are up there now. You can watch them if you want. Otherwise, we will be back for more news. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.